people tend to joke about a pot belly, but when it's actually happening to you and you're the one with the pot belly, it's not exactly fun. It's easy to laugh at at first, but when you get down to brass tacks, it's unsightly, it's dangerous, it's inflammatory, and honestly, it kills your confidence. The cool thing is, is there's a lot of research surrounding what causes belly fat and what causes a pot belly specifically. So we're gonna talk about those. We're gonna talk about a few different things that cause a pot belly in the first place, but then I'm gonna give you some solutions for each of those causes. Now, I will say that there's nothing that's gonna just immediately just evaporate all of the visceral fat and the pot belly fat, right? I mean, it's all a process and these are all little things that you can implement, but I figure if I give you different strategies for each cause, then you can work your way towards a healthier lifestyle and get rid of the pot belly, all right? So we'll break it all down. Hey, I wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button, the little red button there, and then go ahead and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. We've got new videos almost every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, so you don't wanna be missing out. All right, you're gonna dig this stuff, so stick with me because I'll give you the solutions. The first thing we wanna talk about is just visceral fat in general. Okay, visceral fat is the fat that surrounds your organs, right? Visceral fat is around the organ tissue, just inside our abdomen. And the thing is, is visceral fat isn't like ordinary fat. It has a high degree of inflammatory cells and immune cells. So it's immunologically active. It's active in a metabolic sense. And a lot of it is because it's so close to the organs that it has developed its own sort of metabolic structure. It's almost like its own organ in a weird twisted way. But we also have more glucocorticoid receptors within our visceral fat, which means that stress is going to impact our visceral fat more than anything. Now, when we grow our visceral fat, it's not always unsightly, typical sloppy fat, right? It just expands and eventually leads to a pot belly. So sometimes you see people that have that pot belly, they're not fat looking, but they're, they have this belly. And that's what we're talking about. It's the stress that leads up to that, that visceral fat. The other thing you have to look at is there's androgen receptors. So when our hormones are out of whack, everything can get messed up there. Now, the reason that the immune cell thing is so important is that when we have a good amount of visceral fat or a pot belly, it means that we are leaking inflammatory cytokines into the rest of the body, like especially near the organs where it's vital. Now, this inflammation sounds bad from a health and medical standpoint, but it's bad for your fat gain standpoint too. If you have a lot of inflammation, you're going to have fat accumulate in other areas of the body, but you're also gonna be fatigued, you're gonna hold a bunch of water, and you're gonna get sick all the time. So it's kind of the precursor to everything else that happens in your body. Now, the other thing that we have to look at is the estrogen balance. Okay, estrogen triggers the body to store fat in specific areas and it's an imbalance between estrogen and androgens. Okay, so it's not always just about how high your estrogen levels are. A lot of times it's how high your estrogen levels are in comparison to your androgen levels or your testosterone levels or any of these other levels that it has to balance with, right? So you could have low testosterone or low levels here, but if you're even slightly higher on the estrogen side, you're gonna have a problem and it's gonna trigger your body to store fat in specific areas. So when in excess, whatever that excess may be, it promotes the growth of specific tissues and fat in estrogen sensitive areas. Okay, so the belly or the visceral fat, but also the breast tissue as well. So the visceral fat is the one that we're really talking about today because it does play a big role. I'll give you some solutions on how to fix that you know, as we get going on. And this is in case you don't know who I am, by the way, I lost 100 pounds myself. I was 280 pounds before. I've dealt with all this stuff, I get it. So I'm speaking from some experience here. I'm not a doctor, but I've done my research over time and I've had my own transformation. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's talk about cortisol for a second. Now, cortisol gets a bad rap. Cortisol is not always bad. It's just bad when it's chronically high. So stress obviously is a big contributor to a pot belly. We have a specific enzyme called 11-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Big, complicated, fancy $10 word, but basically all it is is an enzyme that is at the specific tissue level that converts inactive cortisol into active cortisol, so cortisone into cortisol. Now, the reason that we want to be aware of this is because when we're stressed out, the fat is going to accumulate more in our visceral tissue. So, of course, we're keeping track of that. Now, visceral fat has four times as many cortisol receptors than any other fat in the body. So that means that when we get stressed out, we're four times as likely to store it as a pot belly than we are anywhere else. Now, here's the bad thing. When we have an increase in visceral fat, an increase in these overall cortisol reaction, let's just call it that, we have an increase in what's called lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase is the main fat storing enzyme. So if we have an increase in lipoprotein lipase that originated from the visceral fat, it triggers us to store fat throughout the rest of the body. So in essence, a pot belly is like the first step down the wrong path for your body getting ready to store fat elsewhere. 
The next thing we have to talk about, and I'll give you again solutions for all this, is going to be the fatty liver. Okay, fatty liver is going to be where literally fat deposits around your liver. And a lot of times it's because you gain weight so fast that the white adipose tissue can't keep up. So it sends the rest to the liver to get deposited there. Uh, but more importantly, it's about fructose and sugar metabolism. Okay, sugar is metabolized heavily in the liver. Fructose from excess fruit or high fructose corn syrup predominantly or almost exclusively gets metabolized in the liver. And it can only handle so much at a specific point in time. And when it can only handle so much, it goes through what's called de novo lipogenesis and it turns it into fat. Well, where's it gonna store it? It's gonna store it in the closest proximity. So it's gonna store it around the liver. Now, think of it like this. Okay, you have your liver about yay big, and then you start building fat around it. That's going to protrude your stomach significantly. It's like if I were to take my hand like this and then just a little bit of fat around my liver creates a big impact in terms of how my belly distends. So a pot belly a lot of times is from a fatty liver. We have to get control of this, which again, I will give you some solutions. Another thing that contributes that I'll touch on real quick is actually pancreatic fat. You don't build a lot of fat around the pancreas is what produces beta cells, which ultimately allow us to metabolize sugar carbohydrates. Pancreas is like a six inch little gland, but it does get fat developing around it, especially when you have a lot of visceral fat in general. So I'll give you some solutions there too, but ultimately if you're getting rid of visceral fat, you're gonna get rid of that pancreatic fat. So first and foremost, how do you get rid of the visceral fat the most aggressively? Honestly, some of you are gonna hate that I say this and it's not biased, but honestly, it's where the research is. A combination of intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet for a short amount of time has a profound effect on visceral fat, especially fasting, okay? And I'll talk about this here. There was a study that was published in the journal of Nature Communications, and it found that fasting did some stuff at the genetic level. It upregulated what's called MIR133A, okay? Complicated gene name, okay? All these weird codes they give them. Basically, it upregulated the specific gene, all right? So what that means is, all it did is it turned a genetic switch that made it so that the body preferentially burns visceral fat. Like, that's really cool. Why? Because when you're fasting, you're stressed and you're in a time of stress. And the main goal of your body at that point is to fuel your vital organs. So what does it do? It goes to the fat that is closest to the organs. The visceral fat drains directly into the portal vein. When it drains into the portal vein, it goes directly to the liver to get turned into energy or to get you know, distributed where it needs to get distributed. So that means when you're fasting, your body just wants to use that visceral fat. So that already is just where we want to be. But additionally, we have more cortisol receptors again. And I know I've talked about this a lot, but when you are fasting, you're stressed out, which actually means your cortisol levels go up and they go up in surges. But when it goes up in a positive way, in absence of food, it actually triggers fat loss to occur via hormone sensitive lipase at the source. So wherever there's the most metabolically active or cortisol active tissue, in this case, visceral fat. So fasting is going to trigger from stress that fat to get burned. I know it sounds crazy because normally stress contributes to fat, but only if it's chronic and you're also eating in the process, right? Now, keto comes into play because if you are keto while you are fasting or going into a fast and you're eating good quality fats, your body's going to be more efficient at mobilizing the fats in the first place. So then once you go into your fast, your body knows how to mobilize it and it's gonna expedite the visceral fat metabolism just much more. So you're gonna rip through that visceral fat so much faster. Now, remember the visceral fat leaks inflammatory cytokines. We don't want a lot of that to happen. So it's very important that you're eating good quality omega-3. So lots of wild caught salmon, lots of good quality fish oil, not you know low quality Walmart fish oil, okay? And just in case you guys are interested, there is a link down below. If you eat meat or you get beef or chicken or anything like that from the grocery store, try checking out Butcher Box. Okay, you've probably seen them before. And if you watch my channel, you've probably seen them all the time. It's grass-fed, grass-finished meat that gets delivered to your doorstep, so you don't have to go to the grocery store. So it saved me a ton of time and saved me a ton of money, honestly, because it's cheaper to get grass-fed, grass-finished from ButcherBox than it is for me to get regular feedlot grain-fed meat from the grocery store. So a special discount for those of you that also wanna try it, okay? So that's gonna be a big part of your overall fat loss, pot belly reduction plan. So now that you've got the big chunk of at least getting your body into overdrive with utilizing visceral fat as a fuel source, Let's get rid of some of these other issues. So the estrogen thing. Okay, without getting medical supervision, there's not a whole lot of things you can do. However, there are some recent things that have been making some pretty big moves in the world of estrogen and just androgen balance. 
One is boron. Okay, if you are a male, boron should be something that you should experiment taking. Okay, possibly nine milligrams or so. Just simple, inexpensive mineral. What boron has been shown to do is basically unbind testosterone from sex hormone binding globulin. So basically it unbinds these hormones that are normally bound up, which helps close that gap with that ratio. Remember, it's androgens and estrogen, and we just want this more like this versus like this. So if we can bring up the free androgens a little bit more, free testosterone, I should say, then we can balance that out and we're not having the estrogen be so abnormally high in contrast to our androgens. So that makes a big, big difference overall in just estrogen and how it's, uh, the tissues end up basically getting deposited, the fat. The other thing that you can do is utilize methane. eat lots of cruciferous veggies, lots of cauliflower, lots of broccoli, lots of bok choy. You can also use a DIM supplement. What it does is it upregulates CYP1A2 in the liver. Basically, this is something that allows the liver to process toxins. And yes, estrogen is a toxin as far as the liver is concerned. So it has to metabolize it. So if we upregulate CYP1A2 within the liver through indol-3-carbinol or through DIM, through good cruciferous veggies, then we put ourselves in a great spot to metabolize that estrogen and excrete it a lot better. Then we have to look at the cortisol side of things. Aside from practicing some yoga and meditation and trying to reduce stress, which you probably hear all the time, there are some things that you can do. Um, if you are keto, I would recommend that you try getting a little bit more salt in. Um, I know some people bag on me because I talk about the salt relationship with belly fat and stuff, but the thing is it's more so aimed towards people that do keto because keto, you lose a lot of your minerals. You got to keep your salt in. If you have your salt levels get too low, it throws off an aldosterone level, which basically long story short, it can indirectly trigger cortisol because aldosterone and cortisol work together. Okay. So long story short, if you're doing keto, make sure you get salt in. But if you're not doing keto or you're just trying to get rid of a pot belly, magnesium is going to be your friend. Okay, magnesium is going to reduce the cortisol levels, it's gonna reduce the stress, and it's gonna make it so that you can get back on track. You see, magnesium deficiencies upregulate the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, meaning if we're deficient in magnesium, our brain is a lot quicker to send a signal to our adrenals, skyrocketing cortisol. So it's more about the deficiency than it is about taking extra. But newsflash, a lot of us are deficient. So you gotta be getting that magnesium in, okay? Take a supplement, eat the magnesium rich foods, whatever you have to do, just get a good form of magnesium. Like dimagnesium malate is good. Any kind of chelated form, just don't do magnesium oxide. Okay, then when we talk about the liver, okay, besides from reducing fructose, limit your amount of fruit that you're taking in, do not consume high fructose corn syrup, okay? Just avoid that like the plague, but reduce the fruit by even half and you'll notice a difference. But try taking some milk thistle, okay? You don't need much, 100 milligrams or so. Milk thistle does some interesting things. The main thing that milk thistle does is it inhibits toxins from binding to the hepatocyte. So it stops toxins from binding to liver cells, meaning you have less toxic of a liver. It gives the liver an opportunity to sort of do its natural detoxing job. So you're just promoting the natural just detoxing effect of your liver. It's not a magic pill, it's not a cure-all, but it does help when it comes down to a fatty liver. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is something related more towards exercise. Now the journal Diabetologia published a study that found that people that had a higher VO2 max burned more fat during exercise. I'm not saying you need to become an athlete. What I'm saying is, if you do low intensity steady state cardio, you do beef up your VO2 max. That's your ability to breathe at just under intensity, right? So if you increase that by doing aerobic activity, if you're just starting out, you will burn more fat in every workout, not just because you're exerting more effort. So the higher the VO2 max in an individual, the higher the potential that a person has, the more body fat they burn in general exercise. They don't have to be reaching that VO2 max. So my reason in saying this is that you don't have to be doing some crazy intense stuff all the time. If you're just getting started and you're trying to get rid of the pot belly, build your VO2 max up. Walk, then walk faster, then run, then sprint, then move into hit. Okay, increase your VO2 max so each time you work out, you're getting more and more visceral fat recruitment. Okay, I hope that this helped you out and I hope that you can share it with some people that'll get some benefit from it, okay? Remember the big things, Keto plus fasting is gonna help you a lot, but doing it with good quality meat, good quality fish, not low quality stuff that's gonna trigger inflammation higher. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.